Are you running out of eggs understanding your ovaries? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. So I'm a fertility doctor. And today we are talking about the ovaries because there's a few things that people don't always realize that I want you to understand. So the easiest way is just to start at the beginning with this quick video. Imagine inside your ovary that there is a vault where all your eggs are kept. And yes, if you've been around, you've heard me talk about the vault before. Every month you have a group of eggs come out of that vault. And this happens from before you are even born. So you have the most eggs you're ever going to have when you are five months as a baby inside your mom. At that point, you have about six to seven million eggs. By the time you're born, that number will decrease to be about one to two million. By the time that you then start puberty, you'll have about 100 to 200,000. And you only ovulate about 400 total eggs maximum in your life. That math doesn't seem to math, so what does that mean? The easiest way to think about it is that that ovary is just full of eggs and it's on this natural pathway. Everybody's gonna run out over time. Every single month, that ovary is gonna send out a group of eggs, even before you start your period. And each egg grows inside a follicle. Now, the follicle is a small fluid-filled structure that you can see on ultrasound, but the egg is microscopic. What is happening is that when the ovary is more full or more crowded, more eggs come out every month. And when the ovary is less full or less crowded, less eggs come out every month. I always imagine that there's a vault keeper standing at the door of the vault. And when that ovary has more, says, ah, it's too crowded, sends out more. And when the room starts getting empty, says, I don't want to let as many people leave and lets fewer out the door. Really imagine that the ovary wants to be in that perfect middle zone. The time period when you lose the most eggs is that time period from five months fetus until when you're born. And so this shows that the environment of your mom is actually a really important time in the development of your ovaries. And you can be programmed for risk of certain genes or diseases. And we know that this is considered epigenetics. So essentially, a lot of times, I always say you can blame your mom. So if you have a low egg count and you come to me and you have a low egg count, I don't know at any given moment, were you born with less and you're just, you're running out fine. Or were you born with a high number and you're running out at a faster deceleration? So it's important to know that a one-time check of your ovarian reserve is not telling us the slope of the line or where you started. It's just telling us you're right now. So all these eggs before puberty come out of the vault, a high number of them, but there is no FSH or follicle stimulating hormone at all because that is the pre-puberty state. So all of those eggs are just dying, losing, 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 losing. When you start puberty, everybody thinks of puberty as being your period. That's really a later stage. Puberty is the maturation of this brain ovary adrenal gland axis. And essentially the brain starts turning on saying, hey, we've reached a critical body weight. We have enough nutrition. We've grown to a certain stage where maybe it's time to start growing an egg soon. And it starts to send out some FSH. And this FSH is starting to get some growth of eggs from the ovaries. And you see this activation of the brain sending out signals to the ovary and adrenal gland as sexual hair, so pubic hair, armpit hair, and because of estrogen, you'll start seeing breast budding and breast development and your final growth spurt. The normal female body has unopposed estrogen for about two years before you actually have estrogen levels high enough for the brain to send out that LH surge and really start that ovulatory pathway. That's really crucial for reaching your maximum height for having full breast development. And in fact, if somebody doesn't have normal breast development and they just get put right on a birth control pill that has estrogen and progesterone in it, they will have an abnormality of their breasts called tubular breasts. And this is a deformity that can be really hard even surgically to fix. Plastic surgeons can talk about it. So 
It's important in normal breast development to have this unopposed estrogen, this estrogen without progesterone. Progesterone is only made after you ovulate. So you have this period of time where you're not having a menstrual cycle, your ovaries are starting to respond and your follicles are making some estrogen, but nothing's getting to a high enough level to ovulate. Because what happens when you ovulate is that from that vault, you have that group of follicles. The brain is sending out follicle stimulating hormone, and now it's sending it out in a strong enough level to get one of those eggs to start growing. And as that egg, as that follicle is growing, the egg is maturing and the follicle is making more estrogen. When that follicle gets to those peak levels of 200 picograms or more for 50 hours, the brain says, Ooh, we must have a mature egg. And it sends out that LH surge that's going to allow the follicle to rupture, the egg to be released, that's ovulation, and the follicle will reform and become the corpus luteum. And then this corpus luteum is going to make progesterone in pulses from the LH pulses from the brain until the corpus luteum dies about 12 to 14 days later, your progesterone levels drop, and that's the signal to the uterus to have a bleed. And then the process starts over again. So remember, you will ovulate before you ever have your first bleed, and you are still losing eggs all of those times. So having a later age of starting your period or an earlier age does not influence your reproductive lifespan as far as when you'll go into menopause. Similarly, if you're on birth control pills, for example, and you don't ovulate all those months, you're not saving up your eggs for the future. You are still losing that group of eggs, whatever was coming out of the vault. Just when you take the birth control pill, you are taking a form of estrogen called ethanol estradiol and a form of progestin. And this is telling the brain, tricking it. It's telling the brain, hey, we have a follicle. We don't need anything. And so that prevents the brain from sending out FSH or getting an egg to really grow. So it's preventing ovulation. Imagine all the follicles come out of the vault just like normal and none of them ovulate. So they all die. And then next month, another group, same thing. When you're pregnant, same process, you're losing eggs. When you're breastfeeding, same process, you're losing eggs until the point when you go into menopause and you really get to such a low egg count that there's nothing that can respond or ovulate anymore. And the brain is sending out its strongest FSH signals, trying to get the ovary to respond. And yet there's nothing the ovary can do. At both extremes, you tend to have some irregularity to your cycle. So when you're first starting your period, there's a lack of maturation. The brain and ovary haven't figured out how to communicate, and you can see irregularity that's perfectly normal. And at the tail end, when you start having such a low egg count, you will start to see some menstrual cycle changes usually. Now remember, if you are on hormonal contraception, you might not see these. But what you tend to see is a shortening of your cycle interval. So it used to be 29 days is now 24. And it's that follicular phase, the time to grow a follicle that's shortening because that brain's signal is not being diluted between as many eggs. So since you're running out of eggs, fewer are coming out per month. The brain is still sending out its signal, stronger signal. So one egg starts growing faster. And the first change you will see in blood work is going to be a lower AMH, a normal FSH and a high estrogen and a shortening of your cycle. You'll then eventually get to where they're spacing out and your follicular phase is longer. And in that circumstance, what's happening is your FSH is high. It's taking longer to get an egg to grow. The egg count is so low that the ovary is getting stubborn. And so it's taking a lot of signal to get somebody to respond. So if you're checking those early day two, day three labs, you'll now see a high FSH a low estradiol and a low AMH. And then those periods start skipping months, getting totally irregular until you've gone a full year without a period. And then that is the definition of menopause. So menopause is a day, a moment where you've now had no periods for 12 months and you're in ovarian failure, your FSH is high, your AMH is low, and you don't have eggs to respond anymore. And everything after that is post-menopause. So you have menopause, post-menopause, perimenopause. All those times in between when you're losing eggs, we can evaluate how many eggs are outside the vault in a given month by checking tests of ovarian reserve. And this is typically FSH, estrogen, AMH, and an antral follicle count. AMH is by far and away the most common now. So what we do when we check AMH is we are drawing a blood test. AMH is made from the cells that surround all of the follicles. So if we go back to the general principle of more eggs in the vault, more come out, 
you'll have a higher AMH when you have more eggs. Importantly, the vault is not perfect. So you may not have the exact same number coming out. It's not a perfect line. So there can be some month to month variation of up to about 30%. And so it's important to know that it, what you see right now may not be what you have next month. There's also some things like not ovulating in a long time, which can make those cells less active. It's not that you're running out of eggs. They're just ultimately less active. The normal level of AMH and your antral follicle count will drop as you have less eggs as time goes on. But general numbers, if you're about 30, I want to see around 20 antral follicles and I want to see an AMH of about two to four. If you're 35, I want to see about 15 antral follicles and I want to see an AMH of about 1.5 to three. If you are 40, then I want to see about 10 antral follicles and an AMH of about one to 1.5. So as you get older, these numbers do drop. And when you get a single blood test, sometimes the range can be really large. So it's important to understand, is this normal for you or is this low? Remember that a low AMH itself or having a lower follicle count is not a cause of infertility itself, meaning if you have five eggs or 15, as long as you're ovulating and you have a regular period, you have the same chance of getting pregnant based on your age. But my question as always is why? Why do you have a lower egg count? And is that something that potentially could cause infertility? All right, ask your questions below so we can do a follow-up video. I hope this helped you understand your egg count, your ovary a little bit better. One last fun fact is that doing egg freezing or IVF does not make you run out of eggs faster. When we do that, we can only get the eggs outside the vault to grow. So they're just ones your body was going to throw away that month that we are giving a chance. Please subscribe and follow along. And as always, you can get more information on the As A Woman podcast or on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. Thank you, friends.